Okay. Okay, so this is the lesson portion for Goodbye to Romance. Ozzy Osbourne, of course, and Randy Rhodes, of course. Here's the opening phrase. By the way, excuse my hands. I just did a whole blueberry thing, and this is not coming off. It's not a disease. It's not contagious. <laughs> Fifth string, 12 to 14 slide. Fourth string, hammer pull off. 12, 14, 12. Now put your third finger down on 14, slide it to 16. That puts your first finger at 14 on the third string. And now you're right here. You can play 15 and 14 with fingers 2 and 1. Do a pull off and you'll end at 17. On the second string. So you have to be here for the next phrase. So that was first string, 14, 15. Play 14. Pull off 15, 14, 17 on the second string. So those are your four notes. The next four notes, one note on the first string, 14, and then three notes on the second string, 17, 15, 14. Come back to 17, bend that. That's the same pitch as the next note you're gonna hit. 14 on the first string. And then back to 17, unbent. So our next phrase is also here. Fourteen, fifteen on the first string. Now, same notes as before. 17, 15, 14, 17 on the second string. That's a group of four sixteenth notes. One note on the first string of 14. And the same three notes on the second string, 17, 15, 14. That was 16 and 14 on the third string. So you're starting with your third finger and ending with your third finger. So it's five notes in the space where there normally would be four sixteenth notes. So it's a little crammed together. The problem he solved was that he can now start the next phrase with his first finger. That whole bit. I think my fingers look worse on camera than they really do in real life. It's just a little purple blueberry, that's all. After these five, you end with your third finger. And now we're gonna do four note combinations, hammers, pulls, one pick each. That was 14 and 15 on the second string. 14, 15 on the first string. The important part of doing this lick fluidly is to keep your first finger pressed against the wood the entire time. If you lift your finger up, you will not be able to play this at speed. I learned that the hard way. From there you go to 15 and 17. From there, 17 and 19. From there, 19 and 21. And then you put your finger on 21 and bend it up to 22, a half step bend. So you're at 21, still a four note grouping. One E and a. That's 21, unbent, bent, and unbent. To 19. Back to 21 and 19 on the first string. To 22 on the second string, back to 19. Come back to 21.
We're going to come to seventh position. Third string with your third figure, bend nine. Come across the first two strings, seven, second string, seven on the first string. Second string, ten, seven, eight, seven. Bend nine on the third string. That's the same pitch as seven on the second string. And then you play nine unbent. So we were here. You play nine on the first string. When you bend it up, you're gonna bend it up a half step. It's nine bent to 10, released, and then seven. That's not part of it. One, two, three. Now this is 10 on the second string and seven on the first string. Now this is eight and seven on the second string, pulled off to nine on the third string. Back to your first finger, seven on the third string. Nine seven on the, the uh, sorry that seven was on the second string. Nine seven on the third string. Back up to six. Palm muting. It's a little hard because I'm plugged in direct, but you palm mute this. Six seven nine on the second string. Slide that up to eleven. the palm muting for that last slide. We're in D major, it's the key of two sharps. You can play this lick in a million different ways and it's probably transcribed in a million different ways. So it's really good to know what you're doing and know where the notes are on the neck of the guitar because actually, you know, something I never really, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say you have choices when you know where you can play things and where notes are around the guitar. Let me demonstrate. I'll turn here. This is a D major scale coming in a little pattern. It's descending. You could play it in one spot. You could play it in a million different ways. You can. Second string, 14 to 15, 12 to 14, also second string, 10 to 12, second string, 8 to 10, second string, 7 to 8, one fret this time, second string. Now, you'll notice we're back where we were before and I like to stay here and play the rest of the scale in position. So I play nine on the third string to seven on the second string. To seven, nine on the third string. So you notice once we get back into where we were before, again I move to the sixth fret on the third string. Now I come across this string. Six, seven, nine, eleven, and our last lick. The chord he's playing over is A7. He's simply going from A, he's playing seven notes, and he's stopping at G, the seventh. Seven. But he splits it up again the phrasing. Two notes to make it fit. He jams in three notes on the second string. Two notes on the first string. 
because that's where he wants to end. He has an extra note. He didn't want to leave anything out, I guess. Or he thought it sounded cool, or it's a nice fast run, or he just did it without thinking. There's no way to know. But I like it. Third string, 14 and 16. Second string, 14, 15, 17. First string, 14, 15. Pick, pick, pick. Back up one fret. 14, 15, 17. Hammer twice, pull off twice. Second string, 17. And your root, D. Just don't go. It's like really not metal at all if you do that. You know, I know he worked the solo out. It, he, uh, a lot of good ideas in the solo. One, two, three, one, two, three. There was a perfect example of what I was just talking about before. I did not play it the way I showed it to you. But since I know the D major scale on all the strings, what happened was I went past it. I went to the fifth fret. But I, kn I know where the scale is on all the strings. I know the strings up and down as well as across and back. So I just picked it up here. You know, it's so much better to do it that way than to just have to rely on the tab. And then if the tab is wrong, not being able to fix it or not understanding it. I don't know. I guess long story short, I'm just trying to say, you know, it's always good to know what you're doing rather than just reading numbers off some stupid tab that could be right or wrong and you have no way of knowing. When you get your shit together, you have a way of knowing. It's a nice place to be at. All right, later.